Today we're going to talk about utopias and on the flip side, dystopias. But let's begin with utopias. Utopia comes from Greek, you meaning no and topos meaning place. Utopia was the title of a book by someone named Sir Thomas More, and it was originally published in Latin in 1516, so quite a long time ago. In this book, there is an ideal place where everything is organized perfectly uh, so as to be perfect for people as a whole, and all of the evils of society have been eliminated. So there's no poverty, no misery. Um, this book was very popular and was given the generic name Utopia, um, or rather caused that the generic name Utopia be applied to all concepts of ideal states. So if something is perfect, it is known to be a Utopia. You may have seen old milk commercials where the cows were so happy and they were in Mootopia. It's a play on words uh, referring to, you know, an ideal utopia. So the description of a utopia lets an author, you know, leave out all of the negativity of the normal world and focus on, you know, positive. That said, there are not a ton of utopian books written because without conflict, there's not much of a story, right? Conflict is really what drives a plot. And so without that, it's just not the same. Um, so like I say, there are a few utopian books that are popular, utopia being the most well-known. Um, there were some books in the 19th century that were utopian romance, where there were just glowing uh, stories of you know people falling in love and social change and um, some of the most famous of those were Looking Backward by Edward Bellamy or A Modern Utopia by H.G. Wells. Um, but more commonly, um, people are familiar with maybe stories of, for example, the mythical Atlantis, which was described by Plato, and it was supposed to be a utopia, this magical ideal place. Um, or you may have heard of El Dorado, similar kind of a thing. Okay, so on the flip side here, we have dystopia. If a utopia is a perfect place, then I'm sure you can imagine a dystopia is a place where everything has gone wrong, right? Dis is bad or ill topos still place. Um, modeled after utopia, it's... Um, a place that is perhaps uh, due to lots of different reasons. It could be oppression from an overzealous government. It could be from disease. It could be from a natural disaster, deprivation, lots of different kinds of things, but that has caused everything to be really bad. And so dystopian literature portrays negative aspects of society and in many cases causes us to look at issues in today's society that, um, you know, if not taken care of could end up much worse. And so this depicts sort of a potential future if things weren't corrected or if things got much worse. So where utopia is the term for an ideal world or a paradise, a dystopia is an attempt at a utopian world gone wrong in many cases. Um, nobody sets out to create a dystopia like, hey, let's start a community and everything is going to be terrible, right? Because nobody would want to live there. Um, so either it's something out of their control where there's been some kind of natural disaster and, you know, the resulting mess is dystopian or they were attempting a utopia and then it just went wrong. Utopias are founded on perfectionism and personal fulfillment. Everyone has what they need and can be content, whereas dystopias often impose severe social restrictions. They remove many personal freedoms in order to attain other ideals such as equality. 
the desire for a utopia forces people to alter their behavior so that they can achieve this goal of perfection. But obviously something has to give, right? In reality, we know it's impossible to have something really be perfect. And so in their attempt to reach that, uh, they lose something. So how is dystopian literature science fiction? Um, these are some excerpts from our textbook about science fiction. We know that characteristics of science fiction can include descriptions of how humankind's technologies have altered planet Earth. It can include colonization of other planets, impossible events and settings like those in a fantasy story, a future world with many features and issues common in today's world, um, dystopian fiction, or literature most commonly addresses the last of those impossible events and settings like fantasy story perhaps could show how humankind's technologies have altered planet earth and um, often shows a future world with many features and issues common in today's world common themes or uh, universal truths that we see in science fiction and dystopian literature are that technological advances will make us smarter and happier or conversely, technological advances will cause us to lose control over our lives. A theme could be tampering with biological systems brings ruin. Why mess with nature? Um, or it could be humanity will survive only if we conquer our urge for war. So there are a number of characteristics that are common in dystopian fiction, and we don't usually see all of these, but you probably will see many of them. As we read The Giver as a class, you'll see many of these. So first, propaganda is used to control the citizens. Propaganda is information, especially biased or misleading, that's used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. One prominent example of propaganda was during World War II, when the Nazi regime put out a lot of propaganda in order to make Jews, for example, look bad. And so they put out pictures of them looking goofy and uh, messages indicating that they were dangerous or um, otherwise less desirable. And so the goal with propaganda is to control citizens to make them feel or a certain way or believe something. In dystopias, we often see that independent thought and freedom are restricted. People maybe can't think or believe whatever they want. They may not be able to do whatever they want. They're limited. We also often find that a particular concept or idea is valued by the people. There's something that they wanted to attain. Maybe they wanted more peace or they wanted more safety or they wanted more equality. And in their efforts to get there, opted to give up other things. We often find that citizens in dystopian societies are constantly under surveillance because those in charge want to make sure that people are following the new guidelines and that, you know, they are going along with having their thought and freedom restricted, for example. People often live in a dehumanized state. So things that we might take for granted as just being natural human rights, they may not all have. Citizens conform to uniform expectations. Often it's expected that most people do X, Y, Z. Um, and there isn't a lot of variance from that in the majority of the population. Society is a false illusion of a perfect utopian world, and we'll see this in The Giver. Many people might feel that it's pretty perfect. There are a lot of positives, and at a glance, uh, as you begin The Giver, you might even feel that way. As you get more familiar with the book or with the society we're discussing, you'll begin to find cracks in it that there are things that are imperfect, things that have been removed or taken away or kept from people that have caused them to lose something that is important enough to us that we see it's just a false illusion of perfection. And in fact, it has a lot of issues. In dystopias, there are often symbols. So 
physical objects that represent a greater idea or concept. So we'll talk about some of those things as we read. And lastly, dystopian fiction has an overall theme that includes a strong message for today. Um, often dystopian literature is shaped by a totalitarian government and there's political authority that's exercising absolute centralized control over all aspects of life. Uh, they might depict futuristic societies which contain really disturbing parallels to the modern world. Um, despite these negative settings and situations and difficult things that the characters are going through, the great thing about dystopian literature is that perhaps more than any other kind of literature, it emphasizes that people create the world in which we live, that our surroundings and our communities can change based on the decisions that we make for good or bad, right? And when we find something that is troubling, we have the ability to make positive changes. In many of these books, you'll find that a character or several characters have a kind of awakening and they see the issues in their society and work to correct them or to make those better for everyone. So I hope you enjoy this unit.